The recording of songs has evolved a lot in the last decades. From the analog to the digital, it has always sought to approach perfection, and sometimes it arrived in the first attempt. Thanks to the huge talent behind it, or even by a stroke of luck, some famous songs didn't need to be re-recorded or overdubbed. And that's why in today's video, we will talk about some songs that were recorded in one take. The House of the Rising Sun is an American traditional folk song. It tells of a person's life gone wrong in the city of New Orleans. The most successful commercial version, recorded by the British rock band The Animals, was a number one hit on the UK singles chart and in the US and Canada. Eric Burden revealed that he first heard the song in a club in Newcastle, England, where it was sung by the folk singer Johnny Handel. The song was recorded in just one take on May 18, 1964. Producer Mickey Most, who initially did not really want to record the song at all, said that on this occasion, everything was in the right place. It only took 15 minutes to make, so I can't take much credit for the production. The Beatles' Please Please Me album was almost recorded in a day. At the beginning of their career, studio time and their busy schedule forced them to record several songs in a very short time, and the album's original track list was made up of songs that the group had been playing for years. On one of the most productive days of their career, on February 11, 1963, they had recorded nine of the 14 songs for Please Please Me, and with 15 minutes left there was still time to record one more song. Twist and Shout was the last song of the night. John Lennon was suffering from a bad cold and was trying to take care of his voice by taking cough drops and gargling with milk. I knew that Twist and Shout was a real larynx tearer and I said, we're not going to record that until the very end of the day, because if we record it early on, you're not going to have any voice left. It was good enough for the record, and it needed that linen ripping sound, George Martin said. The second take did not have the strength of the first, and they decided not to continue. The Beatles had recorded in one take one of their most emblematic songs, and John Lennon said that after the effort of recording it, he had felt his throat scratchy for weeks. Born in the USA addresses the economic hardships of Vietnam veterans upon their return home, juxtaposed ironically against patriotic glorification of the nation's fighting forces. Recorded on April 27, 1982, it was part of a jam session wherein the song's instrumental parts weren't written in advance. They recorded both vocals and instrumentals once as practice, then discarded the rehearsal track without listening to it. You could argue this was a second take, but who could question this song at all? Johnny Cash always had empathy for the disadvantaged among us. In 1969, he recorded a live album at San Quentin State Prison as a part of a series of prison concert albums. He read over the lyrics for A Boy Named Sue only a few times in advance, then played it for the live audience unrehearsed, repeatedly referring to the lyrics sheet and the performance as the band improvised. What you hear on the recording, including the inmate's laughter and his own spontaneous chuckling, was Johnny Cash's one off-the-cuff take. The live San Quentin version of the song became Cash's biggest hit on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, spending three weeks at number two in 1969, held out of the top spot by Honky Tonk Women by the Rolling Stones. Billie Jean by Michael Jackson reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached the top ten in many other countries. Most people don't know, however, that Jackson recorded his vocals in one phenomenal take. Jackson said he felt Billie Jean would be a success as he was writing it. A musician knows hit material. Everything has to feel in place. It fulfills you and it makes you feel good. That's how I felt about Billie Jean. I knew it was going to be big when I was writing it. He explained that hearing it in his head while in his car, he was so absorbed that he did not realize his car had caught fire until a passing motorcyclist informed him. That's All Right is a song written and originally performed by the American blues singer Arthur Crudup, but is best known as the debut single recorded and released by Elvis Presley. Presley's version was recorded on July 5th, 1954, and released on July 19th of the same year. Elvis was in the recording studio between sessions when he and two band members started goofing off playing the old song at a considerably faster speed. The producer told them to play it again so he could record it. 
and in one take, the rest was history. This is a song that was composed for a big Hollywood production, and that is why it is hard to believe that such an emblematic song was recorded in one take. The song was composed by James Horner and its lyrics by Will Jennings, and was recorded in the spring of that same year between Las Vegas and New York. The single had millionaire sales and went to number one in the Billboard. But what not many people know is that Dion recorded her vocal in one take, and that demo is what was released in the film. On April 6, 1963, the Kingsmen, a rock and roll group from Portland, Oregon, chose Louie Louie for their second recording. The Kingsmen recorded the song at Northwestern Inc. The one-hour session was paid for by the band. The song was recorded in one frenetic take. After the band had played a version of it for about 90 minutes at a teen party, just before the recording session. My Way is one of the most covered songs in history, but probably Sinatra's version is the most famous of all. Despite its popularity, Frank Sinatra ended up hating My Way, believing that the song was self-serving and self-indulgent. However, as was common in some of Sinatra's songs, in this emblematic song he recorded his voice in one take. This 1981 international chart topper was the biggest hit of Kim Carnes' career. According to producer Val Garay, the original demo of the tune that was brought to him sounded like a Leon Russell track with this beer barrel polka piano part. Keyboardist Bill Cuomo came up with the signature riff which defines Carnes' version. Only three takes were recorded, the first of which was used with no overdubbing. Well, that's all for today. Comment below which other songs you know from being recorded in one take, and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Thanks for your time. See you soon. This is Music Box.